This is the second video in the derivative series where we're going to be talking about FX forward contracts, FX standing for foreign exchange forward contracts. We'll be exploring the difference between spot rate and forward rates and understand why there are differences between the spot rate and the forward rates. Hello everybody, I'm your learning partner Sushila Hariharan. If you're interested in a career in fund accounting, corporate actions, trade lifecycle or an OTC derivatives, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I provide research-rich content in these areas. The foreign exchange market comprises of two distinct segments. The first one is the spot market. The FX spot market implies that the settlement takes place on a T plus 2 basis. That is, trade date plus 2 working days from the trade date. The interbank FX market which is the largest financial market in the world. If we talk about it being the spot market, then it refers to it being in the settlement phase of T plus 2. Anything that's beyond T plus 2 is called as the forward market. So the interbank FX forward market is for settlement beyond T plus 2. That means it is beyond the spot market. It can be for one week, it can be for one month, it can be for three months, six months, up to a year. In some currencies like Euro USD, it can go right up to five years as well. So let's understand this market in greater details. What's a forward contract? A forward contract has a price lock in. The intention is to settle at a future date. And since the forward contract is bilaterally negotiated between two counterparties to the trade, it is classified as an OTC derivative. OTC standing for over-the-counter derivative between the buyer and the seller or between the two counterparties to the trade. The forward contracts can be further classified into two categories. The first one is outright forwards, where there is an actual settlement an exchange of currency for currency, such a forward contract is called as an outright forward contract. On the other hand, if it's an NDF, that's a non-deliverable forward, the forward contract does not have an exchange for currencies. The profits are calculated and the loser pays the gainer the profit amount. This settlement most often takes place in the base currency or in the larger leg of the transaction, in, which in most cases is the USD. So in a non-deliverable forward, there is no actual physical settlement of currencies. There is no actual physical exchange of currency for currency. The profits are squared off by the loser paying the gainer the profit amount. Why are there forward contracts in the FX markets? The FX markets are the largest markets in the world, a trillion dollar daily market where price volatility is very high. And therefore, the risk of price moving against the trader is also very, very high. Imagine if a hedge fund took in capital in a different currency and converted it. By the time they converted all the currencies, the markets could have moved and therefore there's a significant amount of price uncertainty in FX markets. This method of risk management, wherein there is a protection bought or sold in order to eliminate price uncertainty is called as hedging. Hedging, therefore, is a very important aspect of foreign exchange forward contracts. It's a very aggressively used risk management tool by many of the international banks as well as the hedge funds in the world. Let's take an example because that's how I like to explain my uh, content. Let's go to an example, then let's go back to theory. Okay, so theory, content, example, theory. So that's how we work. Marvel Inc. is a US-based company which receives collections in euros, E-U-R, from all the countries in the European Union once a quarter. So let's understand the first point. Marvel, which is a, a, a US-based company, its invoicing is in US dollars, its billing is in US dollars, its transactions are in US dollars. But because it's collecting revenues from countries in the Eurozone, it is collecting in their currency, which is EUR. This quarterly billing is about EUR $500,000, which is a large sum of money. The robot here, which I presume is the treasurer, is thinking whether they should is there any risk involved for Marvel over here? Look, Marvel is a US-based company. It's going to get everything in US dollars. And that makes it very difficult for it to manage 
this exposure called as currency risk because it has to convert the euros into dollars. This risk of conversion of euros into dollars when the euros will be received after three months is a very significant risk for Marvel. And is there a way that Marvel can hedge this risk? Is there a way that Marvel can reduce the currency risk? Is there a way that they can manage this currency risk and reduce the impact on its balance sheet and profitability? We'll take a look at it now. Let's say on 20th December 2022, when I sourced the data from Bloomberg, the actual spot rate of EURUSD was 1.0615, 1.0622. I've already uploaded videos on how we interpret currency rates. This means 1 EUR is equal to 1.0615 USD. If, the, if you're a market uh, maker, you can bid at 1.0615, you can sell at 1.0622. The three-month euro dollar is quoted in terms of basis points on the Bloomberg screen. And this is how it's quoted, 6667. What does this mean? What is the implication of interpretation of 6667? How do we calculate this? Let's take a look at that. Okay, so the spot rate is 1.0615. That's the bid rate. The ask rate is 1.0622. The basis point is 6667 as given in the Bloomberg screen, uh, dated 20th December. The bid rate is the spot bid rate plus the basis points. Now, the, this is a pip market. Pip market means it's not two decimal digits, it's four decimal digits, okay? That means 1.0615 plus 0 0.0066. This is called as the bid rate. The offer rate, on the other hand, is 1.0622 plus 0 0.0067. So how do we interpret this? The bid offer rate for a three month EURUSD forward is 1.0615 plus 0 0.0066. That's 1.0681. And the offer rate is 1.0622 plus 0 0.0067. The offer rate is 1.0689. Have you understood this? This is how we calculate the forward rate. If we have the spot rate and the basis points, can we calculate the forward rate? Yes, we can calculate the forward rate. So the CFO of uh, Marvel Inc. is looking at the rates of 1.0681 and deciding what has to be done, whether they should take a forward cover at 1.0681 or 1.0689 is something that we're going to see right now. Let's understand the basis points calculation. The basis points calculation are available on any uh, Bloomberg screen and it represents the interest rate differentials between the two currencies. The forward price is the cost of covering the risk. This is called as the interest rate parity. That is, as long as currencies have different interest rates, the currencies will be quoted at a premium or at a discount in the forward market. Let's understand this. You know that for the last two years, since 20,000, uh, 2020 till 2022, interest rate differentials have been astronomical, okay? Because currencies have been volatile, interest rates have been volatile, forward basis points too have been volatile. The interest rate parity theory ensures that there can be little or no arbitrage advantage to any of the hedgers in the forward exchange market. The forward rate calculations have some simple rules. The first rule and the simplest rule that we have to remember is if the basis points are in an ascending order, we add the basis points to the spot rate. So in our example, the basis point was 66.67. So the ask was higher than the bid. The base currency is at a premium in the forward market. So we added the base points to the spot rate in order to get the forward rate. If on the other hand, the basis points are in a descending order. We subtract the basis points from the spot rate and the base currency is therefore at a discount in the forward market. Let's say for example, the basis points were 65, 63. Okay, that means the offer on the forward market is 
lower than the bid on the forward market, then the currency is at a discount in the forward market. So these calculations are the only calculations you need to remember while doing the forward foreign exchange calculations. Let's go back to our dear friend Marvel Inc. and see how much did they sell it for. The three month forward rate that we calculated a couple of minutes earlier is there for 1.0681, 1.0689, right? Now Marvel Inc. is a US based company. They are going to receive euros. They have to convert the euros into USD, which means they will sell EUR in the market. Marvel Inc. over here is a price taker and therefore as a price taker it can sell the euros that it has received or that it will receive three months hence at 1.0681. Marvel Inc. will sell the euros 500,000 forward. At what rate will they sell it at? They will sell it at 1.0681 because it is a price taker. Okay. Let's see whether the hedge was profitable or not and whether the CFO deserves to get a bonus or deserves to get a kick out from the company. They sold the Euro USD at 1.0681. Three months later, the spot Euro USD is 1.0450. So let's understand this. By selling the Euros in the forward market, Marvel Inc has been able to generate 1.0681 dollars per euro. In the intervening three months, the dollar has strengthened and therefore the euro is now fetching only 1.0450 dollars. So what do you think? The Marvel Inc. CFO should get a bonus or should he be kicked out of the company? Okay. Was his hedge profitable? Write your answers in the comment section below. But I'll give you the answer right away. The answer is indeed yay. Because he was able to sell it in the forward market at 1.0681. Mm. But in reality, if he had not hedged and the euros had arrived into the Nostro account, the market would have converted it at 1.0450. And because of USD strengthening, Marvel Link being a USD based company, the company would have actually incurred a notional loss because of this if they had not hedged. So was the hedge profitable? Yes, it indeed was profitable. It indeed made profits for Marvel Link and Marvel Link therefore is that much more happier because of that. Thank you everybody for watching my video. That's all. Keep learning and keep growing.